This state dining room symbolizes your duties as an official hostess. Do you serve many meals here? Yes, this is where all the state dinners and lunches are given. You can seat 102 people. So the table now is not set up for that many. Are there many state dinners? Yes, there are. Uh, there were almost two a month last year. Tell me about the silverware and the china, Mrs. Kennedy. Well, it's not silver. It's all gold or verme. They used to use Monroe's knives and forks, but so many of them have been lost, so they've been copied. And the china is the Eisenhower gold china. You see, so many of the beautiful old services the president's had were destroyed and broken, so now the Truman and the Eisenhower china is all that there's enough left of to use. And there is the beautiful Monroe centerpiece and his flower or fruit baskets and candelabra, all brought from France in 1817. And these glasses, they are ours. I wanted a very simple design so that the china and silver and glass would show up more. So I looked all over and the prettiest ones I found came from West Virginia. Well, they are beautiful. And then this tablecloth is new. It's a gift to the White House from the firm of Porto. And it's all embroidered in gold to match the centerpiece and the knives and forks. And these pictures, there are three of them in this room, the two behind us here. Yes, these two are on loan from the Boston Museum of Fine Art. All three pictures in this room are by Healy. There's Thomas Jefferson, a copy after Stewart. And then there's Daniel Webster, who didn't live here, but he visited the White House for 40 years. And then the most famous one of all is this one of Abraham Lincoln which traditionally always hung in the state dining room. Healy was a contemporary of Lincoln, but he only saw him once, so he painted this picture from photographs. And you can see two damaged spots on it, really quite bad ones. So we hope soon to have all the pictures in the White House that need repair repaired. This is a perfectly beautiful room. Have you changed it a great deal? No, we painted it white. This room's interesting because it has the most architectural unity of any room in the White House. It's really all 1902, when Theodore Roosevelt did the great uh, restoration with Stanford White and his firm, McKim Eden White. The architecture, the consoles with the eagles, the furniture, the chandelier and the appliques, and it's interesting, people always think of Theodore Roosevelt with his stuffed animals and things. Few people realize that he was second only to Thomas Jefferson in his care and knowledge about the White House. In fact, he designed the one thing which is missing here, but which will soon be given to us, a superb mantle. They, uh, McKim, Mead, and White had designed one with lion's heads, and Theodore Roosevelt said, no, the lion's not an American animal. So he designed it with buffalo heads of white marble. And McKim Mead and White now is copying that for us. So you'll soon see it here to replace this just simple molding that was put in in 1948. And Mrs. Kennedy, on that fireplace, just under the mantel, there's an inscription which I found one of the most moving things in the White House. Yes, that's from the very first letter that was ever written from the White House. It was written by John Adams, the first president to live here, to his wife Abigail, who he'd only been here two days, in eight, November 2nd, 1800. And in it he says, I pray heaven to bestow the best of blessings on this house, and in all that shall hereafter inhabit it. May none but honest and wise men ever rule under this roof. It was Franklin Roosevelt who loved that prayer and had it put on the mantelpiece. Thank you, Mrs. Kennedy.